Tio, please. Okay, there, this is Tio bringing another Kerbal Space Program video. Today's video is actually some very old footage, and it was quite a lot of footage, and it was a very complicated mission, so it took me a while to edit and finally you know, um, bite the bullet and, and finish putting this together for you guys. But it was a lot of fun. It was right after the, uh, the expansion came out, not the expansion, but the update came out that allowed you to do EVA construction. So I'm going to go ahead and show you pretty much one of my first attempts of using EVA construction to build a surface base. So I'm in the vehicle assembly building, and I'm mocking up what the station's going to look like. And my vision for this mission was the engineer is going to place all of these components individually. So this is truly just a mock-up. I'm, I'm designing it to see how it's going to look. But I'm not going to send it like this. I'll send it in pieces and put it together on the surface. So I'd seen some other YouTube videos using EVA construction where they basically build a vehicle with uh, docking ports and they use EVA construction for basically an anchor and then they attach everything else and in sub assemblies which is totally fine and I've done that in other missions and I may show you in some other videos but uh, this is the, again like one of the first attempts of me using the, the construction feature and really thought it would be fun to just do everything piece by piece because that's uh, that opens up so many opportunities you can do so many different things and uh, one thing you you'll quickly learn when you try to do something like this is there's some uh, limitations obviously to how much mass an engineer can manipulate because uh, you know they got tiny little green hands and they can't lift quite as much as you'd like but I mean it totally makes sense I guess other limitations are uh, you know when building things like this with floors and walls and, and ladders and so forth you get a sense of the uh, actual space that a kerbal can fit through so like the ladder the ladders and stuff going up to from the ground to the surface i think they can't actually fit through that a little square hole that i put in my design but thankfully in the moon there's low gravity and they can use eva packs to move around wherever they need to go but and it looks cool it looks cool with the ladder but i think unfortunately they do not fit in that little space but yeah here i'm uh, kind of redesigning with some smaller panels i've got a i put a structural tube around it a second ago i don't know if you saw because I, uh, I do plan to send this whole assembly to the moon fully assembled like this so that um, the parts are in the right uh, order. But I'm going to take them off one at a time from inside a tube and reposition them onto the, onto the surface one by one. So uh, I thought about sending them all in, I guess, almost like flat packed, like in crates and stuff. But I thought, man, that would really complicate the, uh, the video and make it... Uh, little longer than I wanted it to be. So for simplicity for myself, I'm just going to go ahead and send it all in this configuration and just disassemble it one piece at a time and put it back together on the surface. So experimenting with some different profiles so that it fits in that largest diameter structural tube. Because that's my plan is to put it in the tube, put it in, uh, strap some engines to the uh, outside of the tubes radially and some landing legs and... Um, I'd also experimented with the idea of putting a docking port on the surface and just dropping the station on it with a docking port. And uh, that never really worked out. And I think I may show it in the video. I'm not certain. It's been, been a while since I recorded some of this footage. So I do remember what I was trying to do, but I don't remember how much of the footage I ended up showing you guys because it's, and it was a lot. It was it took me hours to, to finally get the, the, the finished product. So, and I put it, there you see a small uh, probe core with some batteries attached to it so the station can function if it's not manned, if it's not curbled. It's got some uh, solar panels for energy. It's got some heat exchangers just for fun. It's got some, uh, it's going to have some cargo space for, um, I could put experiments in there. I could put EVA repair kits, spare EVA tanks, etc. And uh, really just for fun. It's, I mean, it's, most stations are just for fun. They don't serve much purpose. You can usually send a small vehicle to get the job done if you need science points and science mode or career mode or something but this is actually going to be in sandbox mode so not not worried about cost that i'm not worried about pretty much anything i'm just trying to see if i can actually accomplish what i want so apparently that structure is going to be a little too wide for the, the structural tube so i'll have to shrink it a little bit but um you get the gist of it you guys We'll decide after you watch the video of the, the footage if doing a structural tube like this is actually going to be worth it. Uh, I think it's, it's a good idea to send something 
like this, but I uh, probably would definitely do it again differently. But uh, I think I cut out some footage out for you guys just to, to let's let's get it into the air and get it to the moon and uh, show you the actual EVA construction, which is the tough part. So didn't show you the construction of the tube around it and the uh, fuel tanks, but you can probably figure that bit out yourself. It's uh, it's important where you attach the structural tube because if you uh, you know, it's got attachment points on top and bottom, and um, those components need to stay attached to it before any uh, it, 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 they need to stay attached. If you try to de detach those and there's any parts attached to them, you know, the EVA constructor is not going to let you. It's going to say, hey, there's still a part attached to this, and you can't remove something if it's attached to something else. So, blah, 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 blah. Sorry if that didn't make any sense. <laughs> but there you see, um, I'm going to try to put the... Um, the ground anchor under the bottom of the tube and it, it wouldn't allow me so let me i left my engineer on the surface and i'm gonna <laughs> try to land on top of the engineer basically which was a silly ridiculous idea because the ground is not level it's incredibly hard to uh, to control this rocket uh, I, I tried several times to just hop right on top of them um, i think eventually as you should see i do land right on top of them boop, and they're both inside which felt like a great victory until I realized you can't place the damn ground anchor down anywhere. It's not allowing me to, uh, to place it because there's things in the way. So I thought, oh, let me get this tube out of the way, and then it'll let me place. But no, it doesn't. You, you really need to have a clear, empty space to place the ground anchor, which was a, a tough lesson to learn. I was pretty annoyed by that point. But I said, okay, let's, let's get back outside of the, the rocket tube. <laughs> and let's see how close we can place it. And you got to get pretty far away several meters away, so place the ground anchor, and let's see if I can land back on top of it now, <laughs> and and reattempt what I just, just attempted, except now I've got to land on top of an engineer and an anchor, but uh, the ground isn't very level, so the rocket slides across the surface of the moon, the, uh, it's not on center, obviously, so this was a, a pretty, this, this, this option was dead on arrival, so um, I think I, I'm going to go ahead and abandon, as you just saw, I'm going to put the tube, I'm not going to try to attach the tube anymore to the anchor. Let's get the rocket off of the tube. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, let's get the rocket off of the anchor. And I'll just build next to it. So, uh, the only uh, issue with this attempt was, again, the ground is not level. And that rocket just keeps sliding. So, it gets further and further away. So, I pretty much, I pretty quickly realized my goal is to get as many parts out of the center of the structural tube as possible attached to the station and I can reconfigure the station later. Let's just get the ports off of the rocket onto the station. And uh, I've got an engineer inside the tube and an engineer outside of the tube, which is nice and handy because I can kind of pass ports from one to the other. I can attach ports from the inside of the tube to the outside of the tube, from the inside of the tube to the station itself. And um, there you see, I'm just robbing as many ports as quickly as I can before the, the, the rocket completely slides away and it's going to make transferring the parts much, much harder. You can, you can do it. You can place the parts on the ground, and you can walk and place them again. Like, you can kind of hop them along the ground like that, but it's, uh, it's a pain in the butt. So I've got all the uh, smaller components attached to the inside of the tube. So I'm just trying to, I'm kind of trying to place things in the right order so to make it easier later, but I'm also just trying to be quick about it. So I can change orientation, and I can fix things later. So I'm putting my science components, my batteries, my... Got a little single Kerbal crew quarter there. Got lots of those little flat panels. And uh, again, I'm probably not going to try to get them perfectly right now. I'm, I mean, it's you can see how far away I'm already getting from the station. So uh, I'm going to start just snapping pieces to pieces. And it's going to start to look like spaghetti, <laughs> it's, which was uh, nerve wracking and uh, made me really anxious while I was doing it. I was like, ah, I got to get this because I didn't want to send another rocket. Didn't want to redo the entire video i wanted to show you the footage of the of the mistakes you know this wasn't a great attempt but sometimes you can make it work you can uh you know work with what you have and in this case i i had actually done it on a couple launches and tried a few other attempts that were like really just for for learning but this i thought was the first true attempt so uh thankfully i had my two engineers i had one of them inside the tube and um managed to do everything i needed to get all the parts out of it and uh built the station so i'm trying to put the uh, ladders so that i can attach uh, my kerbal engineers 
to the lower segments of the station so that I can do EV construction down to the middle and the lower sections so I can attach some of these lower ports. Uh, I did also tweak the design from the EV8 from the um, vehicle assembly building. I ended up uh, putting some tubes on the lower level, as you'll see in a little while, and uh, putting some stuff down on that lower level for uh, realism, I suppose. You'll see in a second, but I've got a <laughs> few seconds left a few uh, in a minute or so to, to get as many parts off look how far I'm getting it just it, it keeps sliding you know a, a meter a minute or so and uh, before long I'm gonna be completely out of range and I won't be able to move any of those components so pretty much all that's left now are some structural uh, some struts I think I think I had some struts and I'm actually just gonna attach them to the outside of the tube and I'll I'll go and grab them and, and move them from the outside of the tube is it's gonna be a whole lot easier than doing it from from this angle so all the other little parts remaining so a couple ladders a couple structural pieces and mostly struts i'm just going to slap them on the outside of the rocket and um now i need to extend one of those ladders so that i can attach myself up there and try to bring all those parts over so i don't have a whole lot of uh, capacity on the kerbal's uh, backpack to put things so basically i have to stay in eva construction mode and just walk across the surface with some of these parts the game does glitch Sometimes when you do that and the parts go flying and they can rip through the vehicle or rip through the station. So, um, you know, be careful. I wouldn't recommend you walk while using EVA construction, especially with a component in your in your hand, in your possession. So, again, I'm just slapping the parts on wherever I can fit them. I'll go and reorient them later. Um, you, you can release a port and walk the Kerbal and grab the port and... Uh, kind of walk things that way if uh, if they're too heavy or too cumbersome or you know it's you having an issue walking with it in your hand but anyway i'm gonna go ahead and reorient now let's see if i've got enough struts and enough pieces where i don't have to keep ferrying parts over from the rocket which is now pretty far away and uh, it was relatively fun it was fun it was worth doing if you haven't messed with eva construction i suggest you give it a try uh, definitely suggest you build it whatever your your design is build it in the vehicle assembly building first make sure you bring the parts that you'll need and you like how it'll eventually look you know it's best to mock it up and try it before just bringing a bunch of parts and hoping for the best so uh hopefully i believe i got enough parts that uh i'll be able to design this up and construct this whole thing as it was designed so i hadn't you know i was worried i wouldn't have enough ladders which i i ultimately did have enough although as I mentioned earlier, you can't fit through that little hole anyway, so the ladders are pretty much just for looks. <laughs> but uh, here's where I'll decide. I'll, I'm going to assemble a few of these components in, on a lower deck because I've got one of those um, uh, nuclear fuel sources, which uh, if you've watched The Martian, you're not supposed to place that near living quarters. You know, it's got a... Uh, an isotope in it that's decaying and releasing heat and producing energy. You kind of want that away from Kerbals in case something were to go wrong. So oh, I do need some parts, including that that uh, fuel source. And there you see I'm just dropping everything on the ground. This is, this is what I was talking about when I kind of might have been speaking gibberish. If, if you're having trouble walking with things in your possession, you can drop them on the ground, walk the Kerbal, pick them up, and uh, slide them across the screen, as I'm doing there. So long as you're not on a hill... <laughs> They won't roll down the hill, and uh, you can move things that way. And so I'm moving like two or three components at a time, as opposed to just carrying one component at a time. The issue is all the crap's just rolling down the hill, <laughs> which is like, very frustrating to deal with. But uh, if you watch me do it, you can learn from my mistakes, and you won't do it yourself. But uh, just tossing the things as far as I can, moving the kerbal, tossing the things, moving the kerbal, <laughs> and it's a delicate dance. So I think at this point, I'm probably thinking I've got enough parts, just wanted a few more struts, and I needed that, um, the RTG. I couldn't remember the acronym. I mean, even now, I can't remember what it stands for. Thermal generator? Radius? I don't know. It's an RTG, and it produces fuel, it produces uh, electricity indefinitely. Not not a whole lot at a time, so you can't, it's not very fast, but it'll, it'll, It'll power thing. It'll, it'll recharge batteries, which is nice. So if you got enough batteries to uh, to send a, a signal from the MUN, the RTG will recharge those batteries indefinitely. So 
I didn't have a whole lot of solar panels. Uh, sometimes you're in the the dark, the dark side of the moon. You're not. You don't have any uh, solar power. So RTG is going to help with that. Well, I decided to put that RG, RTG on that little lower deck there. So putting the finishing touches. We got a few more minutes left. You get to see the last bit of construction. My intention was to send the Kerbals back in that rocket, but uh, I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, just out of frustration with the rocket in general, and, and getting back inside the center of, of the structural tube is going to be a pain in the butt, and that's where the um, little command module is. I don't have a way to get inside the rocket from the outside, I don't think. So that was, uh, wasn't a, a great plan. It was a complete lack of plan, shall I say. A little second station, a little second platform down there, as you can see, is just kind of making it work with the parts that I have. The uh, the, plat the first platform is, is just not going to be as big as it was in the uh, vehicle assembly building, which is no big deal. Got plenty of room for the little experiments and the probe core and some batteries and stuff. It's all just for looks anyway. I think it looks kind of cool. I'm using those structural uh, pieces with some struts to make a little uh, railing around the outside of this. Now you see I'm just putting my science experiments and positioning them around. They look kind of cool. Yep, and I'm going to load one of my Kerbinauts into the station. And he's going to be kind of permanently based there. In theory, doing science. And look, he fit through the hole. He just wasn't using the ladder. He just kind of fell through. And I'm going to use my EVA pack to get back up. So thankfully there's low gravity on the surface here. Let's load my engineer into his new home and show you how I can I'm gonna rotate my uh, communication dish attachment point so that it's uh, facing away and uh, now I can go back on EVA and do a little bit more construction and attach the dish as it was meant to be attached so I'll get back inside in a second here and extend my solar panels maybe expand extend my my communication dish the station's Getting close to, to being finished. Got my lights so I can light it up. I don't keep my light settings um, very low so that I can I can always see what I'm doing. I feel like it makes uh, for better videos anyway. It's hard to it's hard to see things uh, as as a as a viewer. It's just not as enjoyable when you can't see what's going on. So the lights don't serve much of a purpose, unfortunately, for that reason. But I do still like to include them. So if ever I feel like uh, lowering the light setting, the ambient light settings. When I'm in the dark, when there's no sunlight, those lights really do help. The station looks pretty cool for you. If I may say so, I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe. Hope to see you in a future video where I'm going to come back and rescue these kerbals. <laughs> see you then.